uh, and you know, it's been sitting on a hillside in Oxfordshire for 3,000 years. What can we possibly be talking about? It can be seen for miles around. But it seems the Uffington White Horse has actually been shrinking since the 1980s. Yeah, what can be done to turn that around? Gita Pense is there for us this morning, live, and a beautiful morning, Gita. Morning. Good morning to you. Yes, I am here standing by the main body, the torso of the Uffington White Horse. And as you say, it is shrinking. Archaeologists have confirmed parts of its body, its head and neck, have got thinner. Now, today is actually the last day when members of the public can be a part of the re -chalky. You can see a few behind me, some early starters. Uh, this is an annual tradition that dates back centuries. And in a moment, I'll be speaking to a few of them. But first, I've been taking a look at why the White Horse is so special and why it's shrinking. Seen from miles away, the Uffington White Horse in Oxfordshire is considered Britain's oldest chalk figure. Leaping across the head of the Ridgeway Slope, it's thought to date back to the late Bronze Age, around 3,000 years old. And it's thanks to the annual work of volunteers on the ground that means we can still see this ancient animal marking. Is the chalk just from the hillside here? Yes, it's dug out. It's a pit just over there. Okay. Using around 15 tonnes of chalk extracted from a local quarry, volunteers have travelled from near and far to help with the weeding and rechalking. My wife grew up in a village just down there, uh, and I grew up on the other side of the world, but I remember reading books about the White Horse, and uh, it's amazing to be able to be able to add something to it. I'm researching a book on British art and this is 3,000 years old so I thought what better way to get hands on with British art than to come and do a bit of weeding as it turns out. And I saw you pounding away at <laughs> how did you find it? It's harder work than I thought it was going to be but uh, yeah I can take a break and get back to my parents if I want to. I have a strong wrist because it can be very tiring and be dedicated because it's a lot of fun. Not only uh, restoring and maintaining this wonderful figure that we've got, but also an opportunity for people to actually get hands-on heritage. We always say that we want you to uh, understand that you're in the footsteps of the ancestors. Without human intervention, the horse would simply grow over, over about 20 years. And for people to be able to contribute to its legacy and then go away and look back and say, well, hey, I did my bit that day, kept the horse going, it, it, it's a feel-good factor. There's certainly a feel-good factor for Layla and her family who travelled two and a half hours from Dudley. Well, you get dirty and if you get dirty then you're having a lot of fun and that's always the way. What's the best bit about hammering? Uh, you feel powerful, like Thor. Over the centuries, the annual rechalking became a well-known, large-scale public event, so much so that in 1857 it had to be banned because 30,000 visitors showed up, many reluctant to go. Well, now it's carefully managed by the National Trust so that people can take part whilst also protecting this figure. And preserving the figure is going to require more than just rechalking. Since the 1980s, archaeologists have been noticing the white horse become thinner, and now there are plans to restore its original outline. In particular, the neck of the horse was starting to narrow quite, quite a lot. So the project involved a drone survey, comparing the imagery taken from that to an image taken in 1939, aerial photograph, overlaid one on the other, and that said to us that the, in 80 years, the figure had diminished by almost 50%. So it was important to take steps to start rectifying that. For the time being though, keeping the Uffington horse white is the task at hand. Or if you're feeling a bit sleepy, a task for dad. It was really amazing to see so many people coming here and clearly really enjoying using a hammer. Uh, but seriously though, the uh, white horse is shrinking and we heard earlier from Andrew Foley in my film who's rejoining us now. Uh, Andrew, um, we heard about the fact that the white horse is shrinking and that you plan to do something about it. What will you be doing? We'll be uh, widening the dimensions of the horse um, because it's important to do so. If we didn't look after it, uh, the horse would disappear within 20 to 30 years 
And, but whilst we're doing that, we want to maintain the dimensions of the horse, but whilst also preserving its sleek and lithe image, which makes it famous and much loved. And it really is so famous and, and just absolutely stunning to look at from a distance. Do you have any idea you know, why it was created here in the first place? There's been many ideas ranging from is the horse a cat or a dog or a dragon, but we actually believe that it's uh, an image of a horse in connection with the belief at the time that uh, the horse was had a purpose to draw the sun through the sky, which is what they wanted to see. Lovely. Thank you so much, Andrew, and look forward to seeing what you do in terms of widening the horse. I'm just going to come down here, uh, treading very carefully along, I think it's a leg of the horse. Yes. Um, we've got Bill here, Hi. who've you've been working very tirelessly this morning, yep. uh, making a really good impact, actually. Um, what's brought you here? Well, we've been coming here for about five years now, me and my family, and um, I think it's great the National Trust let you do this, because it's kind of like a really as well as contributing to a national monument, it's very meditative, it's very calming, and we've all got very stressful jobs, and it's very nice to just come up here and just bash away a little bit of chalk for a while. It lets your mind wander, um, and you have some great conversations up here because it's kind of like you know, using another bit of your brain. It's a bit like walking. You have some great conversations when you're walking. You have some really good conversations when you're chalking as well. I like that. Good conversations whilst chalking. <laughs> and have you got any uh, advice for anyone that might come along today? Today's the last day when people can come along and re-chalk this year. Yeah, um, my advice for the first time I did it was I tried to do too much. And if you just concentrate on a little bit, and that's your bit, then you'll feel like you've been part of something bigger. Thank you so much, Bill. I'll let you get back to Thank it. You. And uh, yeah, I think that is the main reason why people come here, to be a part of history. But also, you can't deny, it's pretty amazing to take in such spectacular views. Oh, thanks, Geeta. It really is spectacular. And it, it's quite a bank holiday weekend thing to do, isn't it? Stuff with hammers. Bit of DIY. Bit of DIY. <laughs> On a 3,000-year-old white horse. Why not? Why not? Whatever you, works. If you've done your house, do the horse. <laughs>